Rupert Johnson had been working as a janitor for six months, but he had never been treated with such disdain. Hey, old man, what's your face? You're fired. You're too slow to even rake the leaves, and you definitely don't know how to handle a broom. Melissa Green's voice came from behind. The arrogant woman was the wife of Alfred Blake, who opened the shopping mall where Mr. Johnson now worked. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'll clean everything up right now. It's all because of the wind. It brought a bunch of leaves, branches, and dust. The old man tried to explain himself. But it was impossible to stop Melissa at this point. Using her position, she fired Rupert Johnson under some made-up pretext. In fact, the old man's only problem was that for some reason, he was disliked by the impotent woman, who was used to establishing her own rules in the shopping mall. Melissa decided whom to hire and whom to fire. For some unknown reason, Rupert Johnson fell into the category of people that Melissa disliked, and so she decided that he shouldn't work in the shopping mall anymore. Melissa had already found a younger employee, who was more cooperative and minded his own business. For some inexplicable reason, the businessman's wife felt threatened by the old man, and therefore she was in a hurry to get rid of him as soon as possible. Well, if that's your decision, Rupert Johnson said sadly, and taking off his corporate uniform, gave it to the new janitor. Deep down, the old man was very bitter about being treated so unfairly. Of course, Mr. Johnson could complain to the owner of the mall, but he didn't do it. Instead, the old man started coming by his former place of work and sitting on the bench located in the territory of the mall, which was his workplace not so long ago. Reading the newspaper in the shade of the huge elm tree, the elderly man closely followed everything that happened next to the shopping mall. People rushed back and forth, bought something, or simply went window shopping. But Rupert Johnson wasn't interested in them. From the first day they met, the man didn't like the young wife of the mall's owner. The old man felt in his heart that she wasn't as simple as she might have seemed at first glance. Mr. Johnson was well aware that by seducing Alfred Blake, she had secured herself an influential position that she could have only dreamed of before. One day, during his amateur surveillance, the old man accidentally happened to witness a very strange scene. The fact was that Melissa was talking to some sketchy young man behind the shopping mall. The entire scene looked very suspicious to Mr. Johnson. Let me repeat myself. Make him sign the deal with the suppliers from Chicago. It's very important for us. The stranger exclaimed louder than he should have. Glenn, I'll try my best. But you do understand that this deal will ruin Alfred, right? You have to know that the deal with the Chicago firm is a scam. Melissa objected, lowering her voice. But the man was very determined. Are you feeling sorry for this money bag? What does it matter to him? One million more, one million less. Business is always risky. Only the best get to be rich, baby. It was evident from Melissa's face that she was tormented by the decision she had to make. Afraid of being overheard by someone, the woman looked around once again and saw Rupert Johnson standing a few tens of yards away from them. Looking into the old man's eyes, Melissa immediately realized he heard everything. Hey, how are you, sir? Come closer. Don't be afraid. I need to talk to you. The woman called out softly. But Mr. Johnson had already realized that the couple had come up with some kind of a scam against Alfred Blake, whom he treated with particular warmth. Old man, you heard something that wasn't intended for you, but I'm willing to forgive you and even pay for your silence. Trust me, you have never seen so much money. So, what do you say? The stranger joined the conversation. All the while, his small eyes, black as coals, seemed to burn through Rupert Johnson. No, I don't need your money. Just don't do whatever you have planned and everything will be fine. The old man replied with dignity and walked away. Following him with their eyes, the scammers looked at each other and the man said, This old man just sealed his fate. There's too much money at stake here. I can't risk it all because of some crazy janitor who decided to play Sherlock Holmes. Melissa nodded in agreement since she hated Mr. Johnson and didn't mind getting even with him. On his way home, the elderly janitor didn't even realize that his life was already hanging in the balance. Mr. Johnson was frantically trying to come up with a way to warn Alfred of the scam his wife and her friend were planning. 
The worst part for Rupert was the fact that it was the mall owner's own wife who was involved in the scam, as well as that strange man who looked like a hardened criminal. Oh, Alfred, how could you be so successful yet so naive? The old man thought as he crossed the street. The sound of a car approaching him at breakneck speed immediately pulled the man out of his sad thoughts. Realizing that the crash could no longer be avoided, the old man instinctively got into a defensive position and took the hit. Rupert's mind immediately went hazy, and before he knew it, the old man plunged into pitch black darkness. Before losing his consciousness, the old man only had time for one last thought. How foolish. They got me. The driver of the car slowed down for a moment, and seeing the old man lying on the pavement, smiled contently. Well, that's it. And I did offer you money, old man, but now you won't need it anymore. Having made sure the man wasn't moving, the stranger turned into an alley, which led him to the highway where he could easily dissolve into the busy traffic. But the killer didn't know that appearances can be deceiving and that Mr. Johnson had actually survived. The elderly janitor was in a coma for three days before he regained his consciousness. First of all, the old man asked to find Alfred Blake and tell him what had happened. The businessman turned out to be a good man and immediately responded to Mr. Johnson's request. Having bought fruits and various juices for the old man, he came to Mr. Johnson's room in just a couple of hours. Hello, Mr. Johnson. How are you feeling? You wanted to see me? The businessman asked from the door. Well, Alfred, I'm not feeling all that great as you can see, but more on that later. I have some very important information for you, Rupert Johnson said in a voice trembling from weakness. Alfred Blake raised an eyebrow in surprise and prepared to listen. Mr. Johnson had always been a straightforward person, and therefore he immediately laid out everything he knew just as it was. After the old man's story, Alfred changed in the face, while a spark of understanding flashed in his eyes. So that's what it's all about. And there I was, thinking why Melissa had been pestering me for several days to sign the deal with some unknown firm from Chicago. Alfred exclaimed, failing to restrain himself. The old man grimaced, but refrained from further comment. The thing was that he still didn't know how to tell the businessman the most important thing and was very nervous about this. I'm very grateful to you, sir. But could you tell me, please, why didn't you take the money? They offered you an impressive amount, but instead you chose to risk your life and ended up in the hospital bed for it. Why did you do it? The businessman asked eagerly. Rupert Johnson realized that the right moment had come. Embarrassed by his own frankness, he looked the businessman in the eyes and said, I did it because you're my son, Alfred. The businessman looked in disbelief at the old man lying in front of him and said in a trembling voice, What do you mean, I'm your son? That's impossible. I don't have a father. My mother raised me alone. Then I studied economics in New York and took my first steps in business. I only came back to Iowa ten years later. You must be confused or something. Rupert Johnson expected this kind of reaction and continued, smiling. Your mother and I got divorced when you were just one year old. We realized that we weren't good together because we never agreed on anything. After we separated, I married a woman with a child and lost sight of you for many years. And recently, I accidentally found out that you opened a shopping mall on Main Street. So I got the janitor position to be close to you. I didn't need money, I had enough, but I wanted to have the opportunity to see you every day, son. That's why I did what I did. The businessman's eyes filled with tears when he realized that the old man was telling the truth. God, I've been living my entire life thinking that my father had died long ago, and it turns out that you were so close all this time. Alfred Blake whispered, squeezing the old man's hand. Forgive me, son. I should have found you sooner but I was ashamed to look you in the eyes. I know I messed up, but I'd like to ask you to find it in your heart to accept me into your life. Please give me a chance to be there for you for whatever time I have left." The old man said, ignoring the tears flowing down his cheeks. Of course Alfred forgave his father, knowing full well that no one is immune to making mistakes at some point in their lives. 
he informed Melissa that he was filing for divorce on that same day. And according to their prenup, the scammer wouldn't be getting a single cent. With the right treatment and care, Rupert Johnson made a quick recovery. Meanwhile, Alfred came to visit him at the hospital every single day. The father and son talked a lot and shared the most intimate secrets with each other. Looking at the relationship that developed between the successful businessman and the frail old man, the nurses couldn't hold back their tears. They had no doubt that these two men would be fine. Ultimately, they were right. Rupert Johnson was discharged from the hospital a month after the accident. He was still limping slightly, but he refused to use a cane, preferring to lean on his son's arm instead. When Mr. Johnson recovered completely, Alfred appointed him head of security, knowing full well that his father wouldn't let him down in difficult times. Rupert Johnson was honored to accept the position offered by his son and got to work, sparing no effort to make sure that his son would never know the bitterness of betrayal, not only from his business partners, but also from those closest to him.